Hey guys, welcome back to So Love. Thank you for being here with me today. I wanted to spend a little bit of time um, talking about my greenhouse. Um, so this is my first year growing in the greenhouse. Um, I got the greenhouse as a gift in February um, for as a birthday present from my husband. So it hasn't been that long <laughs> that I've been growing in the greenhouse. Here it is, just um, April, um, but we're almost in May. And I do have a couple of things I've learned. So I just wanted to share you, share those with you and also show you a couple things that I'm growing out here in the greenhouse as well. So when I got the greenhouse, of course, <laughs> I was very excited. Um, you know, just that the new possibilities that um, could open up about possibly getting things started earlier outside. Because at the time, of course, I had a bunch of... Um, seed started inside so you know the area that I was using was getting overcrowded um, so that was exciting in terms of being able to do some of that out in the greenhouse of course this greenhouse is not heated so I am looking to find some different ways to um, heat the greenhouse um, without having to use a um, heater all the time so I'll do I'm doing some research on that so I'll share that um, I'll share some things with you um, that I find um, and incorporate and you know we'll see what works and what doesn't work but I am looking forward to um, the next growing season starting some things out here so um, things that I've learned um, some of the challenges I've had um, one of them is just making sure that the greenhouse gets opened um, before the sun gets out and really too hot. So I do work. Um, my husband right now is working from home. My kids are at home. So, you know, sometimes I forget, you know, so we've set a reminder um, in terms of going out and opening up the greenhouse because, of course, if it gets too hot in here, um, pl your plants can burn up and die. So nobody wants that to happen. And, of course, on the hotter days, um, you know, it can get way too hot. So I've noticed um, the average, it averages about 20, de 20 degrees hotter in here. Sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, but roughly it's about 20 degrees warmer in the greenhouse. And then with the sun beating on it, it you know, just like it can get really hot in here. So um, keeping an eye on uh, making sure that um, there is enough um, air circulation and some of the heat is allowed to escape has been one, um, you know, kind of a challenge. Um, another thing uh, in terms of a challenge has been making sure that things get enough water out here because it does get warmer out here. Things tend to dry up a little bit more. So I'll show you a couple things in a minute, but just, you know, making sure that, you know, because sometimes soil can, can fool you. Of course, if you're just looking at the top of the soil, it can appear dry. But if you put your finger down in the soil, it can it can be either a little bit moist or it can be just dry all the way through. So making sure that I'm checking the pots um, to be sure that there's enough moisture in the pot. So the, the seedling or the plant is not drying out um, has also been, you know, something that I've adjusted to. So in terms of uh, awesome things about the greenhouse, of course, uh, being that it does get warmer in here, you're, I'm able to allow some things to germinate a little bit quicker. Um, if it's not as warm outside, of course, I can bring it in here. And I've noticed, like, for example, I was trying to um, do some seed starts. Um, I was trying to start some strawberry seeds. And I had them outside. And... Notice they weren't germinating, they weren't really doing anything. So I pulled them in the greenhouse, maybe, you know, maybe they needed a warmer temperature to um, germinate in. And I've noticed some um, um, starts on those strawberry plants. So there's about five of them, I'll show you those in a second. But there's another tray that I started that does not have anything <laughs> growing in it yet. So. You know, I don't know. It could be a, a little bit of luck, but who knows? You know, I'm claiming it to be the because I brought it in, into the greenhouse. Um, so growing, uh, allowing things to germinate quicker, um, and then uh, being able to have an area 
to store my pots um, has been awesome because you know it pulls them out of the shed it pulls them from being an eyesore in the yard so storage has been an awesome thing to have out here um, and I have found that there are a couple of leaks out here in the greenhouse so what I did was purchase some green um, duct tape to kind of go with the green <laughs> greenhouse and I've just sealed a couple areas and as I find areas that might wear out or might have worn down or we've had some really hard um, rough winds um, you know so just areas that have gotten damaged I've come in with the green duct tape and just sealed a little bit um, definitely having an area to start things like you know the table that is just for seed starting um, has been nice because I don't have to necessarily clean up um, as thoroughly as I might as if I was you know doing it in the middle of the yard or the kitchen or the garage or just wherever so being able to start um, stuff and leave it here until I'm ready to come back to it has been nice um, and then just just I think the biggest thing and the biggest um, thing that I'm loving so far is just having a place just for the seed babies <laughs> so let me show you a little bit of what's going on in here so over here are some of the shelving and these I purchased actually for inside I brought them outside um, you know because again I brought all my ceilings outside so um, the ones that I built I actually took out um, these are definitely more sturdy more stable and you know they can hold um, things a lot better so we'll go over there in a little bit and I'll show you what's growing on those shelves um, this is pretty much where I start all of um, my seedlings between here and this table which you know again I don't necessarily have to clean up every single time I start something so being able to leave it has been nice um, and then one thing I've noticed uh, definitely if you don't have a bug strip in your greenhouse get a bug strip because look at sorry about the if you're squeamish but <laughs> look at all the flies this thing has caught so um, that's been a good thing to have in here just in terms of catching things having these um, supports of course that's a part of the greenhouse but I use them to store some different hooks and things like that on um, Again, storage for all the seed starting things and pots has been really nice. Um, underneath this, I have all of my fertilizers um, down here. So having an area just for, um, you know, the plant things. Like, you know, if you store things in a garage where you might store things <laughs> that you use for your outdoor so maybe like a uh, grass fertilizer or even like your i don't know bug you know um deterrents or whatever you don't want to get that thing those things mixed in with things that you use for your garden and things that you eat so having a separate place for that has been nice again this is just an area for where i store all my pots and a lot of these pots were used you know so of course as i planted things out in my garden these pots come right back here and I'll use them again. I'll, you know, clean them off and use them again. But just having things, <laughs> an area to store, you know, y'all know my seeds are in here. I brought those outside, which I might, um, as it gets really hot, uh, bring them inside uh, because you really want to keep those seeds in a cool dry place. So I might bring those back inside, but it's been convenient having them out here because I can just you know pull something that I want to plant as opposed to having to go inside or wherever those seeds seed buckets are um an area for garden tools an area for gloves my harvesting baskets this is that tape the duct tape I was telling y'all about um that I use to kind of seal and patch <laughs> some different areas um so an area for my harvesting baskets and I have one more small white one which has popped up a little bit in my Instagram videos. Um, this is, I believe, a mixture of neem oil and a little bit of uh, castile soap. Um, but you know, again, you wanna keep anything for your garden separate from things that you 
would normally put in your yard. So like if you're spraying for weeds or spraying for bugs, you know, in your nun garden areas, I definitely keep that separate for us. So again, having that out here has been nice. These I mostly use in the garden. Like I haven't used these um, cable ties anywhere else really but the garden. Um, so what I did was on the cattle panel posts, which there's several videos out there about uh, installing cattle panels. I use the twist ties to um, adhere those to the T posts, you know, so organizing. Um, I've experimented with seed starting in these little um, egg cartons, which went okay. I noticed they dried out kind of quick, so I'll probably end up composting these maybe but i'm holding on to them for just a little bit just to make sure i don't want to do anything else with them um over here i've been trying to keep track of things that i planted so for now those are all just kind of getting stored in here like if i want to reference something or if the label um wipes off and i really want to know the name of the plant i'll keep that just for a little while just to make sure i don't need to reference it um so I've been collecting things in there. And I've also been collecting um, these little bags. Um, so like when melons get bigger or um, if I'm trying to, I don't know, seal something off. I guess this mesh might be a little bit too big for that. But I can use these to support different fruits and foods in the garden. So those go in there. That's just kind of more of the same. Um sorry this is the azomite rock mineral so that gets stored in here bird seed there are worm castings in here um so this middle shelf i actually me and my husband were driving and uh, we noticed somebody had tossed like three of these shelves so we picked the biggest or the most um, stable of the three and we put that in the trunk and it's working great for an additional shelf here in the greenhouse. So up here is just kind of a random collection of, I don't know, labels. I'm gonna eventually put some of the Bokashi um, in here. I make a bug, um, what's it called? Like a bug oil um, in here, or I make a bug oil that I can use for mosquitoes or to deter mosquitoes, which I'll store and keep out here probably. Um, miracle Grow. I just use these on like, you know, none food items. So like my flowers in the front, <laughs> I try to keep that separate just in case, like, I don't want to get that mixed up. So that gets stored up here. Um, some different pots. And so right below that are some different seeds. Some doing pretty good, some doing not so good. And some have not popped up <laughs> yet. So these are like eggplant right here, which those are just kind of starting to come up here and here and here. So I'm excited to see those grow. These are new varieties to me. So Ping Tung, Oswad, Japanese white eggplant. These are some strawberry runners that I pulled off of some strawberry plants. And so I'm trying to get those to root. This one was not doing so well out there. So I thought I'd isolate it and bring it in here. And this is a bitter melon that's not doing that well. Ever since I tried to transplant it in the garden, it's just, it's looked like that. So I might try to reseed and just, you know, hope for the best. Um, Cause I am curious about growing that in the garden. Um, a couple more things that I've started from seed, some lemon gum, some mugwort, which actually this is mugwort. This one has not come up yet, but this is what it looks like. And then there's another mugwort over there, another strawberry plant that I am trying to see if I can get to <laughs> come back alive. Um, cardoon or cardon, I'm not sure if I'm saying cardoon, I think. Um, looks a lot like the artichoke plant, um, but it gets a lot bigger. So I plan on using this um, kind of decorative in the garden, but also as a chop and drop leaf because the leaves are pretty big and I can use them as a kind of a living mulch, allow them to break down and provide some nutrients for the garden. And this is black sage. That's more of that lemon gum over there. Um, these are actually some lemongrass that I actually got at a Asian market. 
and so I came and popped them in I put two in water and one in soil and they all rooted so I just ended up popping them in here but I'll put these out in the garden these actually help to deter mosquitoes um, one benefit of having them so I'll put those out in the garden but um, this one has started well they've all started actually growing up but there is a nice size root that developed on those this is these are dragon fruit cuttings that I purchased um, less well it was in the winter months um, so it's been less than let's see it was maybe around December <laughs> January so it hadn't been that long ago but you can see it's it was just like the cutting here and here um, I had these inside over the winter brought them outside um, and they're growing you know so that's exciting so I am doing some research because I am in zone 7b 8a I don't believe these will survive over the winter so I am prepared to protect these in the winter I'm still doing some research on how I'm gonna do that and what my plan is but it's good to see these coming up these are dragon fruit cuttings again um, so this is okay. um, these are the two strawberry containers I was telling you about so this one this large one is the one I planted these out at the same time um, I actually did a winter sowing method um, so I put them in here and actually you know they were outside this this container shows no signs of any seedlings <laughs> coming up um, but this one within the last week these started growing see I don't know if you can see these little tiny so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine um, in there. So I'm very excited about these. These are a um, alpine strawberry seed, and these are the French alpine strawberries. Those are supposed to be really, really good, like in terms of flavor, but they're really small. Um, so I'm excited to see these grow in the garden. Um, you know, of course, it'll probably be a year or so, a year or two maybe before they start really producing, but I'm excited that they germinated. So going on around, this is longevity spinach, and there are some, oh, this is the tea um, seed I just got, but I read the directions, and this is technically supposed to, it needs some cold um, time or stratification time so kind of experiment I just planted one just to see if it would do anything um, and if it does cool if it not if it doesn't I'll try it again um, you know next year but we'll see what happens with that this this is the delect delecta um, squash that's a new variety of squash um, I'm growing this year trying out this year so, again, having an area to store, um, this is fish emulsion, you know, that's a worm tea concentrate, and here is some fertilizer that I use for my roses, and, you know, the signature garden staples, you need the, <laughs> the boots and the hat, kind of stay right there. So over here, um, these are lemon trees that I started from seed actually a long time ago. It was like November, maybe December. And all of a sudden, like two, three months later, they started growing and they've been growing really, really nicely. So um, I they were all winter sowed in the same pot. And so I separated these about maybe three weeks ago, but they've developed new leaves, you know, since being transplanted. So that's very hopeful. And I thought there was another one, but I think that other one I'm thinking about didn't survive. So these four are doing pretty good. More seedlings here. Looks like that, whatever that is. Oh, the elderberry. Um, so this would be exciting if that actually grows because um, I'm anxious to have elderberry out here. Uh, you can see some more things coming up. That's echinacea and tarragon right here. Like, but this doesn't look like tarragon. I'm not sure what that is. Um, some more things. Now these are mums, 
but I planted these out on the 24th of March so I'm not sure if these have just gotten too much water or they're just taking a while because our temperatures down here in zone 7b have been kind of up and down so I'll keep my eye on those very excited about these moringa seeds that um, germinated and you can see they are coming along so I started these on the 29th of March y'all know the first moringa seeds that I started did not germinate so I will have eight <laughs> moringa trees uh, I'm gonna keep one and then I'll give um, some away but look how pretty the leaves are these have some really good health benefits y'all for controlling blood sugar um, and things like that so and the taste is very mild like you know they they sell moringa powder but you can you know just take the leaves and put them in your smoothie or you can stir fry them um, or what have you so these are what moringa trees look like and the seeds were pretty big um, you know so you can imagine growing into a, such a large tree you would have a pretty nice size seed this is Lovage, which I planted on the 26th of March. So, you know, here you have the 26th and here you have the 24th, you know, or was it something? No, the, oh, this was 26th, the Echinacea, the Lovage is the 26th, the Mums are the 24th of March. And these haven't germinated, but the others have. And of course there's different things, you know, they take longer to germinate. Um, and they might need different processes to germinate, but I guess my point is, you know, um, figuring out what grows better in the greenhouse and what might not grow better in the greenhouse is, you know, kind of the trial and error of this thing. Um, Galanga root, which I actually put this in dirt on the 1st of January or the 14th of January has done nothing so I actually dug these up to see what they were looking like I figured maybe they were too deep in the soil so I brought them a little bit further up um, which I probably need to cover a little bit um, so we'll keep an eye on those and see if they do anything and then these up here what is oh leeks and oh, these are leeks these have not germinated yet at all these are let's see violet violet glam i'm not sure what that is it's some type of flower i imagine but there's no germination up here yet and then no germination here i believe this is ginger ginger uh, my sweet potato i'm starting to get some growth on those you know so i have some sweet potato shoots very soon um this is sweet potato which has not done anything yet these are onions you can see those are growing and then these are i believe all turmeric so this might be ginger though but you know they're that root veggie and you can see there's no growth on those yet let's see this is sweet potato which that is not a sweet potato vine i don't believe that looks more like maybe cilantro or something so maybe there's some seeds that got mixed up so I have read and heard that sweet potatoes love the heat so I had the sweet potatoes at first I think I had them inside sitting in water they didn't really do much I put them outside in some dirt in these pots and they didn't do much um, they did a little little bit but I did notice a difference especially with this pot when I brought it in the greenhouse a couple weeks ago they are going fairly slow but it's very hopeful to see, you know, that it is, that did make a difference. So maybe the heat of the greenhouse was the trick for the sweet potato. <laughs> so that is pretty much um, all I have to say right now about the greenhouse. I definitely enjoy having this space. I definitely enjoy being able to come out here. It's very peaceful. I don't know if y'all can hear the birds chirping, but there's always some birds. <laughs> there are always some birds out here. Um giving me um or serenading me which is very nice as i continue to learn and share as i continue to learn um, new things about growing out here of course i'll give you some updates 
Um, but do visit my Instagram page. Uh, please say hello if you do. Um, join me over there. Let me know that you um, watched my video um, and that you um, or found out about me on YouTube. It would be great to exchange some messages. So please do um, like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much. You guys have a great rest of your day. Bye.